Denise, you want to help um, get a couple of those? Okay. How many of you have your Bibles with you this morning? Praise the Lord. If you do, open them up to Proverbs. And we're going to get started. I want to share with you this morning about kingdom realities. How many of you have ridden on an elevator? Ever had an elevator ride? I want you to think about that for just a minute because I was I was thinking about those elevators and I've ridden on many elevators. You know, yeah, you have to ride one when you go to the hospital or some large buildings. And I noticed something. I'll get on an elevator and I'll I'll push one of the buttons, especially that close the door button. Did you ever notice it doesn't work? And you, you push that button, you push the button, and nothing happens. And I, I don't think it's connected to anything. I think, I think what they, they just put it there to make you feel better, like you have some kind of control while this thing takes you up and down. But it's not connected to anything. And I thought about that, and I, and I, I remember that we need to have a connection with our Creator. And a lot of people don't have a connection. And that connection is being born again. So, along those lines of different things not working, Proverbs chapter 14, if you want to write that one down, chapter 14 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. And we can talk about a lot of things related to that. Uh, obviously, we know someone who just totally rejects God, he's not connected. He's not, crea he, he's not connected to the God who created him or her. There's man's ways. Man has devised many ways that they think is right. And this is good. And, and there's some really good things that happen on planet Earth a lot of times. And, you know, we have good works going on. I know that there's a, a society out there of people that... I'm sorry, I forgot to dismiss the 413 teens. Everybody stretch out your hands toward Pam. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pronounce a blessing on the 413 teens and Pam as she goes to teach in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. Glory to God. There's a lot of societies out there that do good things and you know the American Red Cross I mean how much better can you be than that they're they're awesome it's a it's a wonderful thing but there's no connection in general with that organization with the creator of the universe I believe at one time just like some of our universities, our, our greatest universities fall into this category, just like the Red Cross, it was invented by a Christian. Most of our well-known universities, Harvard, Yale, all of them were first instituted by pastors and ministers of the gospel. And they've gotten away from it. They lost their connection. Same way with a lot of other things. Actually, in fact, hospitals, taking care of sick people, was invented. It was first instituted by Christian people. Got together, and, and of course, you know, nowadays it's, it's not like that at all. It's run like a business, and it's purely secular. There's no connection. In general, I know there's people in the hospitals that are born-again Christians, and they have a connection. But in general, a lot of our institutions nowadays have no connection with God. And I think of that only because Jesus came to this earth. He left His 
godly powers, so to speak, he left them to come to earth and was born a man. Jesus, the Son of God. So, operating in this world, he restored a connection that was lost because of Adam and Eve who sinned in the garden. Jesus came to restore that. And without looking up a lot of scriptures, as soon as Adam and Eve fell, and there, there was a curse in the earth, there still is a curse in the earth, that people can either choose that or they can choose God. That's what we're coming down to in just a minute when we talk about kingdom realities. But, but these things that man has invented, societies, institutions, organizations, even that do good things, they were, they're, they're still ongoing because people are born with a emptiness and they know that they're supposed to be connected somehow with God Almighty. They might not call Him God. They might not call on God. But there's an emptiness in people that they want to be connected to something. Or you, you name it. I mean, it could be a motorcycle gang that they want. You know, uh, there's a very strong connection there. There's gangs. Young people join gangs and they're into drugs and they're into all kinds of other things. But there's a, a bonding there. You know what I'm talking about? There's a, they talk about that strong bond. If, if you hurt somebody in one gang, well, they're going to hurt you back. They're going to protect their own. You see? So, there's inborn in people, there's this desire that they be connected somehow. And there's a false connection in the world, and people get connected, they don't really know why they need this. There, there's a need to be connected. And see, the real need, the real thing that, they, that people should be connected to is the Creator of the universe. And He set up a way for people to be connected. And that is the kingdom of God. The key, see, Jesus taught a certain thing when He came to earth. Do you know what that is? <laughs> I've given you all kinds of hints. He taught the kingdom of God. Turn real quickly, because we're going to find out exactly what that is. Turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Jesus taught the kingdom. And actually there's a reference to this kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus taught. There's 150 references to this on what he went around teaching. And some people will say this, they'll say, well, Jesus came to teach love and acceptance. But that's not true. That's not true at all. Love and acceptance, yes, Jesus taught love and He does accept everyone. But He doesn't accept you with all your stuff. See, a lot of people want to teach Jesus taught love and acceptance, which means He loves me just the way I am. And that's true in one sense, but not all of your garbage that you bring along with you. Because in in Matthew chapter 4, 17, it says this about Jesus. From that time when Jesus began to preach, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is coming to you. And He's asking you to repent. Now repent is a word that we really need to know what that means. It doesn't just merely mean, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. No, it, repent is a much stronger word. Repent means if you're going this way, you're walking this way, repent means you turn around 180 degrees and you walk the other way. That's repent. Turn around and go the other way. So if you're in some kind of sin by 
Jesus saying to you, you're in deep in the world. You're, you're deep inside the world system, which is, uh, can, you know, sin, sickness, poverty, death, drugs, all the stuff is in the world. That's what the world offers you. And Jesus said, don't choose that. Choose the kingdom of God which is love, joy, peace, all the stuff that God wants to bless you with. It's God's love. Don't go to the world for your love. The gangs and the motorcycle clubs and the, and the moose, the royal order of moose, and the masons, and all of these substitutes for the kingdom of God. Don't go that way, but turn around and go to the kingdom of God where you're going to find life and peace. That's what repent means. Choose. You have the choice. In Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy says in several places, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. And that's the kingdom. That's the kingdom of God. But so many people choose something else. That's what Jesus taught. The gospel of the kingdom came to us from heaven to earth and offering us, not making us, He doesn't force us to accept His love and His forgiveness and His blessing. He does not force that on us. He offers it to us. And He gave us free choice in order to make this life-changing decision, choose the kingdom of heaven. While you're there in Matthew, take a look at verse 23. The Bible says, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Or, the good news. The gospel means good news, good tidings. Preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. See, there's a false kind of thing. Here's what happens to people. People make choices and they think that by being very religious, you know, I'm going to church and it I've even heard people say this, it doesn't matter what church you go to. Yes, it does. <laughs> some teach about the kingdom of heaven and some just teach about good works. And we read the scripture, there are ways that seem right to a man, but that way, if it's opposite of God's way, leads to death. And there's a lot of man-made religions. They're not teaching the kingdom of God. They're teaching a religion that was founded on some man's dream. You know what I'm talking about. There are several out there. Some man wrote a book because he had a dream and there seems to be a right way to a man, seemed to be a good man, but that way leads to destruction and death. God, on the other hand, sent Jesus and He told, He foretold right after Adam and Eve sinned and caused the curse to come on the earth, He foretold, He said, there will be a Savior who will redeem mankind. And all throughout the Old Testament were prophecies and most of them had to do with the coming of a Savior, the Messiah. And a lot of things that happened in the Old Testament, I'll make this really short, a lot of the bad things that happened in the Old Testament was to protect the seed of the Messiah. You see, there were, there's been all throughout history, even right after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, they tried to kill the seed, didn't they? The king proclaimed, kill all the children two years and under. They tried, Satan tried to kill the seed. And all through the Old Testament, I'll tell you right now, some of you wonder, well, why was there so many people that had to be destroyed in the Old Testament? Because if they weren't, they would have killed the seed. Now I don't have time to explain all that. But 
That's in it in a nutshell. There was God proclaimed, He gave a prophecy, there, there would be the seed of a woman that would save mankind. Wasn't there? Amen. Amen about that. All right. Turn to John chapter 3. This is so important. I want to show you some things that are so important about the kingdom. The kingdom of God. See, the kingdom of God is not a democracy. Do you know that? It's not a democracy. It's a lordship. He is the King of kings. The Lord of lords, the Bible says about Jesus. He's the King of a kingdom. And a lot of Christians don't understand this. And, and we get into this mode of being religious and we don't really understand the kingdom. We have a Lord. When you come to the Lord, you're actually bowing your knee. You are submitting to the Lord, King of Kings. On earth we have kings and they're treated like royalty. When the king of all kings came to the earth, we crucified him. Again, mankind in their own religious ways, their own... See, the religious people are the ones who put Jesus on the cross. They're still doing it today. Teaching their ways is the right ways. But God's way is the right way. The creator of the universe. And the reason people take it for granted is because God doesn't make you do anything. He never forces you to choose Him. He wants you to choose Him and love Him like a father to a family. That's God. That's God Almighty. The one who loves us. John chapter 3. Listen to this close. Most assuredly, Jesus said, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And all of us think, for a lot of years I thought this too, that what it's talking about is we'll never go to heaven. But it's talking about more than that. Yes, that's true, but it's much more than that. What it's talking about, when you, when you see something, you're, the light is turned on. Oh man, I, I understand it now. And that's what it's talking about, the kingdom. Not, not just that we're just simply received a ticket to go to heaven. Uh, the Lord, He's passing out tickets. And you must be born again to get your ticket to go to heaven. No, He wanted much more than that. He wanted you to understand the kingdom and His Lordship and how much He wants to give you, supplying all your needs. He wants you to go to Him and, and give Him thanks for supplying all your needs. And instead, people nowadays, they, they receive a lot of blessing in their life, but they give themselves the thanks. <laughs> I did a lot of work to get this far. No, God made a way for you to, to be where you are, you are right now, even though you didn't know it. What a wonderful God He is. He loves like we can't love. Not until we get to heaven will we love like He does. Because He loved when people spit in His face. Put Him on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He loved us. Even when we reject Him. He's awesome. God Almighty is awesome. See, this thing about seeing the kingdom is so important that I want you to turn to another scripture. Mark chapter 4, starting with verse 10. This is pretty awesome. We need to see, we need to understand the kingdom of heaven. Everywhere Jesus went, He taught about the kingdom. He taught the kingdom is like a man who sows seed on the ground. The farmer who sows seed. He talked about the kingdom of heaven is like the man who went fishing. He used easy things for man to understand and he was always talking about the kingdom. 
And he, a lot of his parables and all of his teaching, a lot of them alluded to the fact that people reject his offer. He sent out a man with invitations to a big wedding feast. And everybody had excuses. Everybody had excuses. So, actually, number two, the, the point I want to get to here, not only is there two kingdoms to choose, and we want to be connected to the kingdom of heaven, of course, but there's also another thing. And that is, our goal is to not just be religious, not just accept some church's philosophy or the way, this is the way we do things here. No, this is the way the kingdom operates, is our choice. This is what we want to choose. This is the way the king set up his kingdom. And then we want to get rid of all the excuses because, like I said, the parable that went when they had this big feast they were going to prepare, well, one man said, well, listen, I, I just got married. I have a wife now. Uh, and I can't, I can't come. <laughs> what a lame excuse that is. Bring your wife with you to the feast. But the king was rejected. Another man just bought a piece of property. Listen, I have to go attend to my property. I don't have time to go to the big feast that the Lord is putting on. Another man was, had to take care of his animals. Everything, there was an excuse for everything. And you know this yourself, there's an excuse for everything nowadays too. God comes, God says, assemble yourselves together. Hear my word that's being preached. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And people have excuses. Well, I, I got to do this or I got to do that instead of the way God set up things. But there's other excuses. People go 100% to the Word of God. We're supposed to go 100%, no compromise. I'm not going to compromise the Word of God because a man has his philosophy of how things should work. No, I'm not going to compromise. The Word of God is sent from heaven to help me, give me instructions on how to live this life, I may not understand all these pages. Matter of fact, I can guarantee you I do not understand all these pages. And neither do you. But that's what we're supposed to do until the day we go on to be with the Lord in heaven. We're supposed to look into the perfect law of liberty and get our freedom, get our being set free from the cares of this life. That's what we do. That's, that's our, our very life. I, I looked up the word lifeblood. And it means the very existence of yourself is right here. This is our life. It's life and peace to us. Not another book. Other books will help us understand this. I, I know, as a matter of fact, I write books myself. I like writing books. But this is the book. The Word of God that we study. And the other books should line up with it or else get rid of them. But this no excuses thing is a huge thing even in the church. Listen, we have lots of excuses. And I, I don't mean to step on anybody's toes, but listen, you got to get rid of the past. If you're still living in the past, that's an excuse for you. And you got the Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it say, listen, tell me all about the past or dwell on the past or think about the past and it'll help you go forward in life. No, it, nowhere. It doesn't say that anywhere. Jesus said, when you put your hand to the plow, don't look back. Just keep going forward. And this is hard to do, I understand. A lot of people have been through a lot of bad things. But the Bible says, think on these things. Whatever is good and lovely, a good report. And this is terrible. I know some people have experienced some terrible things. Uh, they've seen family members die. Some even murdered. There's been terrible things that happen in people's lives. But the healing is when you look forward and you look to God. Put your mind on those things. That's our job to help people do that. 
can be converted in, in the thinking of your mind. Think on these things. Be transformed by renewing your mind. See, if you go and you're talking all about the problem that happened back in 1950, if you, if you keep talking about that, talking about that, talking about that, it's not going to renew your mind and be transformed into thinking the way the kingdom of heaven wants you to think. That's a little off the subject, but I'm telling you, we need to be kingdom-minded. We need to be realizing there's a reality of the kingdom, which supersedes everything else. The kingdom overcomes everything. Colossians chapter 1. Let's go there. This is so important. Kingdom realities. We need to be connected. We need to have this 100% attitude. Not just, listen, uh, uh, so many people go to a church and they talk about salvation every single Sunday and make sure everybody's saved and going to heaven. And in the meantime, you know, whatever happens, well, we, you know, we just have to struggle through the heat and the coal until we get to heaven. But that's not the whole gospel. That's only a very minor portion of it. It's the most important part. I'll grant you that. It's the most important part. But it's if you don't go any further than that, and you're only concerned with, I'm going to heaven. Thank the Lord I'm going to heaven. But Jesus said it was more than that. He said, don't even worry about the clothes you're going to wear or the food you're going to eat. Seek first the kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom. Not seeking first the, all about me. Well, i got to make sure I am where I'm I'm recognized for what I do. You know, not that. You're, you want the kingdom to be recognized. I want the kingdom to be recognized. The kingdom of the Lord Jesus. And here's the fact that a lot of people don't understand. If you are born again, then you will understand the kingdom. If you're not born again, you're, you cannot understand the kingdom of heaven. And all you know is that if I accept the Lord Jesus, I, I'll go to heaven. Maybe, some people think. There's much more to it than that. Did we talk about Mark chapter 4 yet? No, we didn't. So keep going to Colossians. And we'll come back to Mark chapter 4. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says, He has delivered us. Jesus has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, the, the Lord Jesus. So in other words, there's two kingdoms and you have to make the choice. You're either in the kingdom of darkness or you're in the kingdom of light kingdom of Jesus. And if you're not born again, you're in the kingdom of darkness and you cannot understand the kingdom of light. You have to be born again first. Let me prove it to you. Mark chapter 4, verse 10. Did you save your place there? Okay. Mark chapter 4, verse 10. Those around Jesus with the twelve asked him about the parable. He just talked about the parable of the sower. The sower sows the word. The sower sows the seed. And some on good ground, some on bad ground. And, and the people looked at him like, what in the world are you talking about? They didn't understand. And neither did the disciples at that time. The twelve asked Jesus about the parable. And he said to them, listen close, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, it has not been given that they should know. Do you see what, the, what I'm talking about here? If you're inside, if you're born again, Jesus was giving this example because the kingdom of God is a mystery. You cannot see the kingdom of God. It's invisible. 
You can see this physical world and all its temptations that bombard you all the time. You can see, you can feel the hurts and the pains and the struggles. You can, it, it's all physical. You don't have to wonder about it. You don't have to use your heart to see the kingdom of darkness. You're already in it. You have to use your heart. You have to be born again in your spirit man, your heart, in order to see and understand the kingdom. To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that, verse 12, seeing they may see but not perceive. By hearing, they may hear and not understand. Listen to me. People study the Bible. College professors study the Bible. But they don't understand it because they're not born again. Can you see that? You have to be born again. No wonder people say, I just don't understand. The Bible is too hard to understand. People will say, did everybody say that to you? Yeah. People do it all the time. And that's because they're not born again. Look it. Here, let me talk to you about secret societies again. They're, they say that there's secret societies all over, especially for rich people. The Illuminati and... Don't ever study it. I'm just telling you about it. But, you know, people like Bill Gates and, and uh, some of the other ones that are wealthy, 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 billions, billions of dollars, they have societies that they enter in and you can't get in. It's closed door. You can't get there. They'll, they'll you know, without saying it, they'll say, well, where's your billion dollars? <laughs> There's a secret society and they have secret things that they talk about in these societies. The Masons, another thing. They have secret words that they say and secret things. And if you progress, progress up the ladder, uh, you, can, you, know, you can know different things. But if you're down on this rung of the ladder, you can't know certain things. It's all secret. It's an imitation. It's a false imitation of the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is open to everybody. All you have to do is surrender. Your earthly, personal life. Surrender to the Lord. Stop fighting against the Lord. And be born again. Otherwise, you read in the Bible and you don't get it. You think it says something else. While all the rest of us that are born again say, Wow, look at that! Praise the Lord! And then, you know, unbelievers are saying, well, what's so special about that? <laughs> you talk about a Bible verse, that you, like this one, Mark chapter 4. See, this, is, this shows you. It's the mystery. And you can't understand it unless you're born again. And the unbelievers are saying, what? <laughs> they say, well, what are you talking about? It's, it's, you got to be born again. It's the kingdom. And its invitation is to everybody. That's why we always say that prayer together when we're having communion. So that if there's somebody here that's never surrendered their life. The Bible says, when, when you are born again, you lay down your life so that God can raise you up. A lot of people don't teach that. They just say, listen, if you say this prayer, then we'll give you a ticket to heaven. That's cheap. That's a cheap gospel. Uh, uh, the real gospel is lay down your life and follow Christ. That's the real gospel. When we get there, all of our dissatisfaction, all our disputing, all our arguing melts away. Because you know what an argument is? An argument is trying to prove your point. So that you can be right. But if you're born again in Christ Jesus, you're not trying to save yourself. You've already been saved. You're not trying to make yourself right. Jesus already made you right. You're dead to yourself. That's the way the kingdom operates. When you get that, when you hear and understand the kingdom of God, 
Man, all your depression will be leaving you. It'll be gone. Because, listen, all your thinking is about the kingdom of heaven and the Lord of that kingdom, the king of that kingdom. I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> it isn't easy, but it's simple to understand. Don't try to fight for your own way. Because because it's not a love walk. It's not the ways of the kingdom. The ways of the kingdom is to walk in love. Forgive how many times? Seventy times seven. In the natural, you can't do that. If you're not born again, you don't even have a prayer on that one. Because you got to, you know, you have to get even. Something was said to me, and I am going to get even. You might not say the words, but you do it, though, don't you? <laughs> yeah? Well, I'm not going to do that for them because they did that to me. That's not the way the kingdom operates. Be good to those who do you wrong. <laughs> Heap coals of fire on their head is what the one verse says. Be so good to them. <laughs> okay. Matthew chapter 6. Because, see, if you learn, if we start learning about the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven operates like this. If you're blessed, you see, the kingdom does something totally opposite of what's natural thinking. If you're blessed, give it away, the Bible says. <laughs> That's not natural. You know, in the natural, in the physical world, the kingdom of darkness says, listen, I earn every penny I get and I'm holding on to it tight and I'm not giving it up. And the Bible says, let loose of that so I can bless you some more. That's the way God operates. That's the kingdom of heaven. But if you're going to fight for your own way of thinking, the end thereof, is destruction. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 familiar verse Our Father in heaven hallowed be thy name your kingdom